What's up, guys? This is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. All right, guys, in this Lightroom tutorial, we're going to go over this image, which was actually submitted by one of our loungers from Lisa Jeffries by Photos by Lisa. Now, Lisa is basically asking us how we would take this image and create kind of a nice vintage effect using the Lightroom 4 preset system. So, we're going to show you guys how we would go about that and also show you guys the settings for those that don't have the Lightroom 4 preset system as well. Now, before we get started, let's go over the information, just to kind of talk about how this image was shot. So I'm going to hit I, and this was shot on a 5D Mark II at 1 200th of a second at f6.3 at ISO 100, and it was on a 24 to 105 lens zoomed in at 96 millimeters. Now, a couple quick notes. Uh, Lisa shot this at f6.3, which is great because it keeps the subject very sharp, but notice that there's still a, a large amount of bokeh in the background, that kind of rack focus effect. If this image were taken on, say, a 50 millimeter prime at f6.3, the shot would look a lot sharper, uh, like in the background. So what's giving us that kind of blur and that effect is the actual lens compression, which is great. Notice that she's at 96 millimeters on her 24 to 105, and that additional lens compression is what creates additional kind of blur in the background, the, the rack focus effect that you see here. It looks beautiful. It's a great shot. And now let's talk about how we would edit it. I'm going to hit I. Now, Lisa did something really great here, which is something that I often do when I'm shooting as well, which is when I have, say, a, sh a shot like this with a really bright background and I'm not using any sort of fill lights or anything like that, I'll often shoot just a little bit underexposed. That way I have more tonal range when I get into post-production. That way I can kind of do a little more tweaking. Obviously, when you do that, make sure you shoot at ISO 100, which Lisa did right here, you can see. All right, so let's get to production. And the first thing that we always do is start with this standard import preset. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in just kind of a basic exposure setting. Let's go up about two stops of brightening just to get it up really bright. Now what we're going to do is select a curve first and then go back and make additional base adjustments because I know we want to go with a vintage effect, but I want to first settle on what type of effect we're going for. So what we're going to do is go down to our curves. And I think a really nice curve for this is going to be I want to do two of them. We'll do two. We'll do first a, let's do a desaturated cross uh, neutral wash, and that's going to basically desaturate a little bit, add some cross processing, and kind of wash out the, effect, uh, the image a little bit. Now let's go back to our base adjustments and make some tweaks. So in our base tones, I want to flatten out the tones a little bit just to get a little bit of skin tones more flat. We're going to go down to detail and do a light soften. I want to kind of soften it, create a really nice soft portrait look to it. And now I want to add some contrast to my image just to kind of beef up that contrast a little bit. Now from the black side, I think it's okay where it's at because I don't really want to darken it too much because I kind of like this overall nice fade that we have going on. So it looks really great. What we're going to do now is just tweak my temperature a bit by warming it up a little bit. I want to have a really nice warm tone and kind of a nice just summer fade to this image. You know, something that you might see in like a Vogue magazine where it's kind of desaturated, uh, it has a really warm, well any kind of fashion magazine, but it has a kind of a really warm and washed out feel to it. Now, this is kind of an optional effect, but what I sometimes like to do is add a medium vignette to this. And then what I do is I go down to my lens corrections, and then we're just going to pull in that vignette a little bit more. And doing this just kind of darkens the edges a little bit, creates a nice kind of subtle graduation in the colors, uh, like where it kind of gets a little bit deeper towards the edges. It has a really nice overall effect, um, and but I just don't want it to be too strong where it's kind of like it's a noticeable vignette, basically. All right, so last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my brushes. I don't like this vignette effect over the dress. And so what we're going to do is just do a one-stop dodge. And then we're just going to drag this basically over. And you know what might be easier? Well, yeah, I think what might be easier just using a graduation brush uh, or graduation filter. That way we kind of get a more even kind of toning. I'm just going to drag it up over the corner right here just to kind of brighten up this edge so it doesn't look like we're basically darkening her dress. Because I'm not a big fan of that effect. All right, guys, now from here, you can really do whatever you want. If you guys want to do a detail enhancement or whatever, what I might do is grab another brush and do a little enhancing with the details. So what I might do is just grab a little hair enhancer. Where is it? Right there. Hair and lashes, and just pull this right over the hair just to kind of make that hair pop a bit, make it a little bit more vivid. I kind of like that look a lot, especially on shots like this where she has really nice hair. It kind of is catching the sun, great colors in the hair. We're just going to drag it over, and then I'm going to remove it from the skin just to make sure we're not covering any skin areas or background. We don't want it to be noticeable. All right. Last thing I might do with this image is just soften up the skin a bit more in certain areas. Like over here, we have some kind of change in color with the skin. We can kind of reduce that effect a little bit by just uh, doing a skin softening a little bit. 
All right, so just on the shoulder, basically, I'm just going to pull this over, soften up a little bit more. Again, I want to be careful not to cover the hair, so I'm going to go over the hair in a second. Okay, now I'm going to hold Alt or Option on a Mac. We're going to reduce it from the hair, just remove that effect from the hair. And notice how it just kind of flattens out those tones a little bit more over the skin. All right, guys, so that looks great how it is. Let's go over the settings now of what we've done for those of you that don't have the preset system. So basically, we brought up exposure by two stops. We put up contrast at plus 50 just because we need a little bit of extra contrast. We're lowering our highlights, increasing our shadows, lowering our whites, and increasing our blacks, which is increasing dynamic range in our shot. Once again, Lisa did great by shooting this a little bit underexposed, and so we have more tonal range to bring out through the post-production process. We have clarity at negative 10 to kind of soften up the overall image. We have a very kind of nice soft light in this image anyway, so we want to keep it on that side. If we bring up clarity too high, you get this kind of nasty grunge effect, which I'm sure our model here would not appreciate. Um, now with vibrance, we're reducing it again because we want to create that kind of slightly desaturated look. And now let's go down and look at our tone curve. With the tone curve, we have a flattening curve, which is basically we're adding five points, we're pulling up our shadows and dropping our highlights and adding this slight curve to it, which is basically creating our fade. With the color effects, we have an increase in the reds and the highlights, a decrease in the shadows. Same thing with the greens, just a little bit less greens in the highlights and a little bit less, or a little bit more greens in the highlights, but less than the reds. And then we're decreasing greens in the shadows. And then we're adding a little bit of blues in the shadows and decreasing the highlights. And that's giving it that slight cross-processing of feel to it. All right. Now we don't have anything for split toning, but for detail, we do have our standard sharpening applied. So if we zoom in, we should make sure that it's not overly sharpened. And I don't think it is. It looks good right about there. What I might do is just fix up this little bit of detail right here. That looks a little bit clumpy. Um, and we can add a little bit of noise reduction to this. Because it is a portrait, and because we do have a little bit of noise in the image, it might be a good idea just to add a tiny bit of noise reduction. So let's go up plus 20, actually. All right, now for lens corrections, we've pulled in that vignette, and that is it, guys. So let's make that quick adjustment right here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select, let's see, which one do we, here's the hair one. So I'm just going to pull this off by holding Alt and just remove it from right here so it doesn't kind of have that clumping look to it. And that looks great. Now for a different look, if I wanted to create a different look, what I would do is I would select this image, hit Control apostrophe uh, or Command apostrophe on a Mac. And now we can just switch up the curve that we're using and then make minor adjustments from there. So let's say we want to go with uh, a slightly different curve. Let's go with, say, uh, maybe more of a punchy curve. So it, well, let's pick a warm cross neutral punch. Now from here, we're just going to make adjustments to basically reduce our exposure a bit, um, kind of maybe make it a little bit less warm. And let's do that over here just so we have precise control since we're only making minor modifications. So I'm just going to cool it down or cool it off. All right, we're going to leave, that's actually a little bit too pink. So let's reduce the tint just a tiny bit and bring up the warmth a tiny bit. And that looks great right about there. Everything else I kind of like where it's at. If we want to reduce contrast a bit, we can. Uh, if you want to pull down the blacks a bit, you can. But it looks pretty dang good right there. And now we've kind of created a different look. Once again, you can create another one by just hitting another version and then choose a different curve again. Each one of these curves is going to basically create a different look. It's going to overwrite the previous curve without changing the other things that you've applied to it. So we want to create like a nice black and white vintage look to it. We just select that. We have a black and white curve. Make a quick adjustment to exposure and contrast, and we're done. Same thing if I want to create maybe you know what looks kind of cool in these uh, in these field images that are very warm is I think adding cool curves to them. So adding like say a teal or even like a cool cross to it. Let's go with a teal actually. It kind of has this like green look to it, which looks really nice actually. You'll look in a lot of magazines and a lot of magazines when they go for these vintage effects, they're adding a lot of teals and kind of greens to it, and then you just warm it up slightly. Okay, so. So let's check this out. Uh, let's hit Shift and select all of them. We're going to hit N to go into survey mode, just so we can see all four images. And I'm going to hit Shift Tab to remove all of my uh, panels. And we can see the four different looks that we've created just in a matter of moments. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And we'll see you guys with the next one.